First of all, welcome to City Hall. Uh, we're running just a little bit late uh, with our new council. We had a photo night tonight, so that's why we're a little bit more dressed up than normal. Uh, before we start tonight's meeting, uh, we'll have a prayer led by Councilwoman Carrie Carroll. Then please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance after that. Let's all bow our heads in prayer in honor of all of our mothers for Mother's Day week. A mother's beautiful heart. Love finds a home, a place to rest inside a mother's heart so blessed. From there the sweetest giving flows and kindness with compassion grows. God's gentle grace is found there too. Celebrating all of our moms, all that they've given, and all the lives that they've touched with our love. In Jesus' name, amen. At this point in time, I'll ask the uh, clerk to please have roll. Bray? Here. Carol? Here. Henry? Here. Lubert? Here. Mahalovich? Here. Pope? Here. Prather? Here. Schulte? Here. Scrivener? Here. Weber? Here. I see in the crowd we have uh, some scouts with us tonight. If you could please come forward to the podium. Welcome. Can you tell us what troop you're from, your name, and what badge you're working on this evening? We're from Troop 2 of Jefferson City, Missouri, out of the First Presbyterian Church, just down the street from here. And I'm Chris Stock, the Senior Patrol Leader, uh, Life Scout. And um, my name is Steven Miltenberger, and I'm working on citizenship in the community. And I'm from Troop 2 also. All right, great. Who's behind you? I am uh, David Stock, one of the adult leaders of the troop, and uh, just here to help the boys out with uh, taking notes and seeing how uh, the meetings work in town. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, thank you for everything you do uh, within our community. Obviously, the Scouts is a great organization. Thank you for being here. Uh, next we have on uh, tonight's agenda is a proclamation for a Lions Club uh, site week. Um, <coughs> who's here representing uh, the Lions this evening? There you go. You guys are the ones that always sell those light bulbs back when I was younger. <laughs> so we're sort of kind of still in competition. If you guys could uh, please come forward to the microphone, I'll read this uh, proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas members of the uh, Lions Club International in the state of Missouri play a critical role in supporting the Missouri Lions Eye Research Foundation through their volunteerism, and whereas Missouri Eye Research Foundation's community vision helps provide and preserve and restore sight to approximately 50,000, I repeat, 50,000 people each year. Now therefore, I, Eric J. Strump, Mayor of Jefferson City, do hereby proclaim May 6th through May 12th as Lion Sight Week. If you could come forward, please. Thank you, congratulations. <laughs> All right, you guys did a great job. That number of, uh, of 50,000 definitely is big. Uh, Ed, while you're here, could you introduce your uh, crowd, or better yet, uh, one at a time, just tell your, your name and number. <laughs> My name is Lion Ed Borst, and I'm with the Jeff City Host Lions Club. Matt Music with Jeff City Evening Lions. Ryan Emhoff of Jefferson City Host Lions. All right. Luann Haithcock with Jefferson City Breakfast Club. Gene Racker, Cedar City Lions Club. I'm Sandy Stunkel, and I'm with JC Capital City Lions Club. I'm Jesse Haithcock with Jefferson City Evening Lions Club, and I'm serving this year as the Central Missouri's District Governor from District 26 M7. Lion Jeff Hilke, I'm with the Jefferson City Evening Lions Club. I currently serve as the second vice district governor of our local district here. Also serve on the board of directors for the Missouri Lions Eye Research Foundation. 
All right. Thank you for being here. I was uh, I was uh, touched the other day. I was able to speak at your uh, state convention held here in Jefferson City. We appreciate organizations like yourselves doing that. Uh, once again, enjoy the proclamation and thanks for all you do for the community. Uh, next on the agenda tonight, if we could have Bill Lockwood forward. Whereas the second National uh, Kids to Park Day, organized and launched by the National Park Trust, will be celebrated on May 19th, 2012. Whereas it is important to introduce new generations to our national parks. Whereas National Kids to Park Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and to the outdoors. Now, therefore, I, Eric J. Strumpf, Mayor of Jefferson City, do hereby proclaim May 19th as National Parks Day. Bill, come forward, please. Bill, I want to thank you on top of the community of everything you do in your department for our parks. You do a great job. Thank you. Okay, next we have under uh, number seven is uh, the following minutes have been uh, uh, filed here at City Hall, Planning and Zoning Commission, Cultural Arts Commission, Housing Authority Board, uh, the Stormwater Quality Advisory Committee, Public Works and Planning Committee, and the Campo Board of Directors. Next we'll have our uh, committee reports, and first, chairing the Administration Committee is Councilwoman Carrie Carroll. Thank you. The Administration Committee will meet this Wednesday, May 9th at 8 a.m., and there are some appointments on this agenda. And since this is our first meeting of the new council year, we haven't uh, run those through the administration, but all of them are routine uh, reappointments that don't require any special action. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, moving on uh, to our new finance director, uh, who is uh, in charge of the finance committee, and that is Sean Schulte. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Um, the finance committee will meet on Tuesday, May 22nd, 730 in the morning across the hall. All right, thank you, Sean. Uh, public safety, which is chaired by uh, Councilman Brian Pope. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public safety uh, a committee met since uh, our last council meeting on April the 19th, at which time we discussed the uh, uh, fire department improvement uh, program, which uh, is before us tonight in Bill 2012-6 uh, to be read initially. Our next meeting is going to be May the 17th, following the uh, uh, pre-meeting, the council pre-meeting on uh, Thursday the uh, 17th. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Pope. Moving on to our Public Works and Planning Committee, uh, Councilman Bob Scribner. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> uh, the uh, Public Works and Planning Committee met uh, Thursday, April the 12th, and uh, several of the things that are on tonight's uh, agenda were discussed. Uh, uh, vacation of sanitary sewer and acceptance of right away um, uh, for a couple of locations tax bill consolidation uh, the ag lease at Al algoa water wastewater treatment and uh, permissive use of right away for uh, uh, fiber optics uh, that will be uh, brought through the city so there are uh, several things going on at public works you guys are always busy there bob always thank busy. you very much for stepping up to uh to chair that once again this year. Any guess, other uh, liaison Mayor, I, I reports? I guess I should say our next meeting will be May 24th, too, uh, okay. across the hall at 730. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. And any other uh, liaison reports tonight? Seeing none, next we'll move into appoint, appointments by the mayor. At this point in time, we'll entertain a motion uh, to accept the group uh, as printed. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign motion passes next we'll have uh, we're lucky to have with us tonight uh, mr. Phil Freeman who's here to talk to us more about the Old Town uh, presentation and exactly what we're looking at there Phil welcome and thanks for all you do for Old Town thank you mayor thanks to members of City Council I'm here at the invitation of uh, Councilwoman Carroll and Councilman Bray to give you a brief update on the Old Town uh, revitalization company a, a quick refresher, uh, Old Town was formed by a vote of the council three and a half years ago, and we've been charged with redeveloping the core of Jefferson City. Um, Old Town, by its definition, is Clark Avenue on the east, Dix Road on the west, Stadium on the south, 
and the river on the north. Most of Jefferson City's largest employers reside in this area. The first course being state government, obviously Capital Region Medical Center, St. Mary's, Medi St. Mary's Hospital, uh, Central Dairy, Coca-Cola, Fectal Beverage. We have some of the largest employers residing in this area, so it is a, uh, an area that uh, encompasses a great deal of Jefferson City, and as I said, we were charged with uh, uh, rejuvenating the core of the, of the community. Some of the accomplishments we've made, uh, if you look at the screens, uh, one of the first things that we were able to accomplish is the 100 block of East Dunklin Street. And you can see the before and after. We were able to partnership, to develop a partnership with Larry Cobb and Steve Rollins in an area where most of those buildings were vacant. They have now been rehabilitated. I think out of their six or seven storefronts, they might have one that's still vacant. The apartments above those were rented before they were completed. Uh, we were able to work with them. We put together one of the first TIFs in Jefferson City, and we hope to use this as a template for other areas of the community as we, as, as, uh, we try to redevelop uh, commercial areas. Uh, this is an area that uh, we're, we're very proud of, and as I said, I, I hope we can um, continue to monitor and uh, use that as a, another area. The next area is the Old Town Center. This is on the corner of Clark Avenue and Atchison Street. The building was owned by Homer Cavett. Uh, at one time it was a laundromat, at one time it was a liquor store. As best we could tell, it had been boarded up for in excess of 20 years. Uh, we were able to get a grant through HUD to purchase the building. The building was stabilized. We entered into a lease with a group of area churches led by First Methodist Church and it has been, they did the interior rehabilitation. It is occupied for a community center. HALO, a group that works with African uh, adoption, takes the upper floor and they have a community center on the lower floor. Uh, Grace Episcopal Church is gonna put a garden in behind this facility uh, within the next uh, week or two. So we're very excited about that, something that uh, is, is, and we'll talk about the 800 block of Clark Avenue just a little bit later. The next area, uh, and I know a lot of you were involved in this, but this is the Lafayette Interchange. When Roger Schwartz was with the highway department, there were ex extensive negotiations. We think this is crucial to the development of the near east side, bringing access to the prison site, Jefferson City High School, and uh, Lincoln University. That construction will start in 2014 and is one of the few construction projects that's going on in this area. But we think that is something that's going to be vital to the development of the Near East Side and something that we work quite a bit on. The next one is uh, the Walker Apartments. I think most of you are aware of this. This is on Mulberry Street. One of those, we had been negotiations with the owners for uh, uh, over a year. Uh, that is in a floodplain. There was some floodplain money that became available. We contacted the owners, we negotiated with the owners, and then one of those units caught on fire. Uh, we were able to re start, resume negotiations with the owners uh, with some flood money and some private donations I was able to secure. We, we being the city now owns those properties. They will be demolished and turned into green space uh, sometime hopefully this summer. Uh, to say that is a problem area is probably an under, understatement. But that is something that we're extremely proud of and will be uh, brought down, and I know the neighborhood is very happy with the outcome of that. Uh, another area Councilman Kerr is very familiar with is the downtown. In the last, uh, let's say, three years, there have been major renovations in downtown areas. Lofts are being created. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce had a weekend, I think a Sunday, where they opened up the second floor of a lot of those, and there was like six or 700 people that attended that. So we see a lot of progress being made down there. One of the things we were able to work with through the city is the down payment assistance so, uh, program. This is a $5,000 down payment assistance to people, who, at that time, first time property owners, who were able to purchase a property in Old Town with the stipulation that that building, would, they would have to live in it, it would be brought up to minimum standards, and they had to live there a minimum of five years. At the end of five years, it could be sold, but it had to be sold as a residential and not a, a, a rental pr a property. Uh, that has, um, uh, last we heard, has about 12 different people who've acquired property in the Old Town area, 
and we've had a couple who've applied to, to for a second, and we're working on that. Another thing that we accomplished, um, five of the local banks each put up $500,000, uh, Central Bank, Hawthorne Bank, Jefferson Bank, Providence Bank, and Home Savings, each put up $500,000 in special term loans. At this point, we know of 12 different loans that have been generated through this special term. And this is not just residential, this is also commercial. So those are some of the things that have been accomplished in the last uh, three and a half years. Where we're going from here, um, we have developed a website. We're developing a, a and the website is www.oldtownjc.com. Uh, we are developing a marketing plan to push people to that website. Um, where we're looking at is with gasoline, it's coming down, but it had been approaching $4 a gallon. We want to put together a marketing plan. If you work for the state, or you work for Central Bank, or you work for Central Dairy, wouldn't it be cheaper to buy a house in Old Town, renovate it, walk to work, ride your bicycle to work, instead of living in Westview Heights, Eugene, Lynn, places like that. So we are working on a marketing plan. We will be rolling out. Part of this is the web page that you're looking at now, but we want to start pushing people to that website. We find a lot of people, mainly younger people, who are excited about renovating older properties, but they're concerned of what to do. How do you abate asbestos? How do you abate lead, lead paint? And so what we want to do is encourage them to uh, indeed make this a, a project that they would be happy in, uh, that they would be able to do. Two areas that we've identified for, for particular development are the 800 block of Clark Avenue and the 600 block of East McCarty Street, a couple blocks to the east of where we stand right now. Let me talk just a minute about the 800 block of, of Clark Avenue. This is where the Old Town Center opened about three months ago. Uh, this has been a problem area. Uh, those in the Fifth Ward are well aware of this. Uh, since Old Town, the Old Town Center opened, a private developer has bought three houses in that block. All are vacant. Habitat for Humanity is redoing two houses in that area. One is a rehab. The second is a new build. We have worked with a couple of the banks. The product is not complete yet. But what we're trying to do is put together a, a program to where not only can the participant borrow the purchase money, they can purchase the, they can borrow the rehabilitation money in one product. Uh, the banks are working through some compliance issues. We hope to have that product available within the next 30 days. Our plan then is to contact all the property owners in 800 block of Clark, 600 block of East McCarty, and invite them to a meeting at the Old Town Center. We'll have banking representatives there. We will have buyers there. We have people there that will be willing, if they do not want to rehab their property, they can either donate it, they can sell it, whatever. What. We're trying to concentrate, as I said, in the 800 block of Clark Avenue, we are having quite a bit of traction. Uh, the uh, Jefferson City High School Building Trades is building a house on Atchison Street, which is um, about 100 yards off of that. Uh, we've had some People talked to us in the um, 600 block of East McCarty. We thought we had a donation there. We were ready to, to, to accept that donation. Uh, then we've, we think that eventually will work out. So we are working in those areas. If we can identify blocks like that, get those done, then we can move into other blocks. Um, something that is in the uh, current half cent sales tax, I've worked with both the city and the county and we've identified 10 different streetscapes, similar to what was done on, on East Dunklin Street that we hope to do in the next, uh, next five years. One of those is the 800 block of Clark Avenue. So there are several others, and those are ones that we've identified, and that is in your half-cent sales tax so that we indeed uh, hopefully uh, uh, will be able to accomplish those. In closing, I'll ask for questions in a minute, I'd like to thank everyone here the administration, the mayor, the city council, you've been extremely supportive. The city staff has been great uh, in, in supporting us. And as I said, as we look to continue uh, these efforts, um, I've told everyone since the day we started, we didn't get in this problem yesterday and we're not getting out of it tomorrow. 
But as you can see from the presentation, we are starting to make uh, some inroads and some problem areas. And as I said, I think as time develops and with your support and your continued efforts, uh, we will be able to continue uh, to rejuvenate the older part of the community. That being said, other than thank you, I would be happy to answer any questions. Gary. Thank you for all of the effort. Old Town is just, I mean, that's such a promising presentation and all the progress and um, amazing uh, renovations that you've done. And also there's a Facebook page in addition to the website. Right. So. Uh, I'm not on Facebook, so I probably wouldn't be one to comment on that. But uh, uh, I understand we are on Facebook and we are on, on the web page. So uh, we're, we are trying to get the word out. As I said, we've got, we, we, we know there are quite a few people out there that are encouraged they're thinking about it they just don't quite know how to go about it and that's what we want our marketing plan should kick off soon and and bring them the web page and encourage those people to uh, uh, think about old town as i said with gasoline at four dollars a gallon wouldn't it be easier to live in old town and walk to work or ride to your bicycle to work uh, and uh, enjoy the uh, the activities of the community mayor yes sir what else, Phil, can we do to help you other than... You all have been extreme... You all. I shouldn't, the council, previous councils, this council, mayors have been extremely generous. Uh, and, and all we ask is that your support, your goodwill, the staff has been great to us. As I said, that uh, 100 block of East Dunklin is just a, a gem in the rough. Uh, to be able to do that, and the city was very supportive of that. They've been very supportive in the Old Town Center. So, uh, Bob, all I can ask is your continued support. Uh, if, if you would continue the down payment assistance, that would be great. Uh, we, we have a small budget that uh, obviously we could continue to use if, if, if available. I know times are, times are difficult in uh, tax collections, but, uh, you know, your, your support and your goodwill. You know, uh, you, you touch all members of the community. And once again, encourage them that there are programs out there that if you want to purchase a house, in Old Town, and remember, Old Town goes all the way from Clark Avenue, Dix Road. So this is, in most of your wards, uh, this is a, a an area that uh, is is ripe for development. We're seeing a lot of uh, private money coming in. As I said, there's one developer who has purchased three houses in that 800 block of Clark Avenue. He wants to purchase at least two more. He's going to do those with his own money. Uh, Habitat's working in that area. Uh, our next major challenge will be down here in the 600 block of East McCarty, particularly on the east side. Uh, we see that, and, and some of those old homes are really neat. And uh, if, if we can get the right people, the right combination, the right synergies, so just your support would be great. Phil, real quick, I mean, what you do for the city in Old Town uh, is second to none. The development and the restoration of that area, without that, uh, I'm not sure where our city would really be. And uh, these uh, signature projects... Uh, such as the one over on Clark Avenue that you've done in the last year. I want to commend you for that. And I also want to point out a special part of our staff, and that's Melva Fast. Oh. I know Melva works with you hand in hand uh, to make sure that these uh, grants are coordinated, and I think we owe her a round of applause along with your group. Mayor, Unless anyone I would, has any other uh, comments I would or second questions. your motion about Melva. She does a great job. She finds money where nobody else can find it. That's good. That's good. Phil, thank you for coming, and we really do appreciate it. I'm sorry, Ralph. Go ahead, Bob. Phil, in terms of uh, the monies that you have available uh, and the people applying, are you, are you spending, are you able to grant all the money that's available to you, or do you have more people applying than you have? At, at this particular point, Bob, we have not used all those $5,000 down payments that you all have appropriated. Uh, we would like to continue to have a reserve there that if indeed as, as we continue these marketing efforts uh, uh, that that is you know it's it, it's a great program there's some other things that they can get on tax abatements and, and and all these particular things but you know if you could hold in reserve from us some of these these down payment as assistant programs help us continue to market old town as far as you know uh, the sending people to the website uh, we don't need a lot of money we don't want a lot of money uh, what we think we can do is just the word of mouth, getting people out there and getting enthused about living in Old Town and rehabbing in Old Town. And as I said, you can see it in downtown. You can see it in the parts of the community now where we are starting to uh, uh, have some traction. That 800 block Clark Avenue five years ago was 
bad. Right. Uh, it's turning into a pretty nice area. And I guess the purpose of my question was just to kind of see if the activity seems to be, if, if there's more uh, awareness uh, on the part. We're getting there. Of we're getting, like I say, we didn't get in the problem yesterday, we'll get out of tomorrow. So we're getting there. Absolutely. But as I said. And you're doing a great job. Uh, well, I, I, we're, we, are, we are doing we're doing what you charged us with, and, and uh, I, I think we will be able to uh, continue co report back to you on progress that we're making. Councilman Lubert. Uh, you mentioned a little bit ago you were working with a donation property on East McCarty. Have you actually acquired any properties through donation? No. Uh, yes. Haven't we? Yes. I think we've acquired one or two, but what we've done, Bill, we sent letters, we being Old Town under my signature, to property owners that the city identified as potential for a donation. We didn't get a great, we did not get a great deal of response, but we found out a lot of those people then started contacting Habitat and different ones to where they, once that contact has been made, they are willing to make that donation. We are a not-for-profit, so we can assume property, and I've worked with Habitat, with the uh, Jeff City Community build, um, High School Building Trades, and home builders to say, if we accept a piece of property, will you help us in the renovation and they've agreed to do that so there has not been a great deal of property donated to us but we found out after the letters went out several made donations to habitat and so in in a roundabout way yes there have been been some donations of property we were real close we thought we had one in the uh, uh, 600 block of east mccarty it was a an estate we were contacted by uh, the attorney for the estate we thought we had it, it was not rehab it could not be rehabbed. It would have been demolished, which that we were willing to do that. Uh, but then some other errors got involved and it's been put on hold. So, uh, but we plan on contacting other property owners to let them know the availability of donation of your property to either Old Town, to Habitat, to some of these other agencies. And between that, con that group, I think we can make some inroads. Bill, real quick, if you, if you had more money, could you do more? I don't think so. Okay. I don't so think the so. Money, that, that, the uh, money, the budget's about right. Mayor, I don't see us as a facilitator to be buying property and, and, and rehabbing property. We're the bridge between the people who want to donate their property and people who want to rehab their property. And what we ask for you is the ability to continue that down payment assistance. That's a good mechanism for us but also the ability to bring, to communicate with the people of the community and let them know that there are programs out there that if you're inclined to renovate an older piece of property, this is what's available to you. As I said, uh, asbestos scares a lot of people, particularly younger people. Asbestos scares them, lead paint scares them. There are ways to abate that. We have people with the knowledge of how to do that. So if we have the ability to communicate, we really don't need more money. We're just here to, to give you an update and, as I said, encourage that down payment assistance, but the ability to communicate and, and continue those, those bridges is um, there's, there's money out there that we've been able, to, I say we, have been able to find that is indeed uh, available uh, that we can continue to push these programs forward. But we really don't, I'm not here to ask for more money. Don't, don't construe that. I'm here just to simply thank you, thank the staff, Thank everyone for what they've done because, as I said, we've been able to uh, have some accomplishments. As I go back and said before, we didn't get in this problem yesterday. We won't get out tomorrow, but we are making progress. Bill, thanks for the update. We, we definitely appreciate it. Thank thanks you. I'd be happy to come at any time. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda tonight, uh, Michelle Gleba could not be here. Uh, she's actually at another assignment. Uh, filling in for her tonight is uh, uh, our city administrator, Nathan Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, make the council aware of, of two things. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the fourth and the last of the first series of our town halls will be held this uh, coming Thursday, May the 10th at 9 a.m. Should last from 9 a.m. to 11. And that'll be held right here in the city council chambers. Uh, we've had uh, great turnout in those town halls already. and. Um, we wanted to offer one that was kind of during the daytime so other people could could make it uh, then secondly uh, 
we have a work session coming up on the 29th. Correct. <coughs> uh, and on Tuesday, 29th. Yes. And there'll be uh, two topics that we're going to go over at the work session. Uh, we're going to go over the results from the town halls, which will all have been finished by then. And uh, I would just say on that, uh, as I've said to a number of people, don't expect a bar chart showing particular numbers because that's not really the kind of data that we gather, but we'll kind of give you uh, a sense of the comments that we got. And then uh, secondly, we will go have a review of the history and the current status of the conference center and talk about what, uh, what plans are in place and how we got to where we are today. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Moving on to number 13, we have uh, the consent agenda. At this point in time, we will entertain a motion to approve. Second. Uh, who was the second? I'm sorry. Dr. Pope. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, we'll move into uh, bids over $50,000. Um, who on staff has a uh, bid 2606 mr mr schwartz thank you mayor uh, this is a replacement of a of one of our snow plow trucks it's a single axle dump truck uh, and uh, we are recommending the approval of the low bid that was submitted by uh, columbia freightliner of one hundred and two thousand eight hundred and forty seven dollars i'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have okay any questions or roger Seeing none at this point in time, we'll entertain a motion. It's been moved and seconded. Um, discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Mayor, you could do that by. Uh, I was just wondering that. Thank you. As she was grabbing the big, the big book. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you, Drew. Uh, next, we'll have uh, 2604. Roger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, each year, the city takes bids on asphalt materials that uh, our street department uses for street repairs, and this is the bids that were received this year for the upcoming year um, for the cost of picking up asphalt to do uh, street repairs, and we are recommending approval of the bids. We obviously use the low bidder unless they are not uh, providing any asphalt at that time, and then we'll look at the uh, second low bidder if if we have a um, a repair that's that's needed urgently so we'd recommend approval of the bids and i'd be happy to answer any questions any questions for roger seeing none all those in favor please say aye oh sorry we need to, a motion first bill's bill's my first uh <coughs> dr pope's the second um discussion all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now we'll move on to uh, bills introduced. We'll have first reading of Bill 2012-4. An ordinance approving a plan for an industrial development project for modern lithoprint company in connection with the proposed issuance by the City of Jefferson, Missouri of its taxable industrial development revenue bonds in a principal amount not to exceed four million dollars to finance the costs of such project. Drew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is part, <coughs> excuse me, part two of the uh, modern litho print company bonds. The prior council approved putting the ball in, in motion, and this is step two. This bill would approve the plan and uh, move forward on the bid documents, and I believe we have bond council here to discuss it if we need to, although I don't see them, so maybe not. <laughs> They're disguised as other people. <laughs> Essentially, we're we're, uh, we're footing the bill for uh, 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 the uh, modern well, uh, now the name eludes me. Modern. Essentially, a printer. Okay. <laughs> for modern litho. For modern litho. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions there on uh, twenty dash four? Is twenty dash five the same, or did you already cover that? It's only slightly different. Twenty okay, dash. have first reading first. An ordinance authorizing the City of Jefferson, Missouri to issue taxable industrial development revenue bonds, modern lithoprint company project, series 2012, in a principal amount not to exceed $4 million to pay the costs of a project for modern lithoprint company, a Missouri corporation, 
that will include the acquisition and installation of a corporation of an offset press at the existing facility located in the city authorizing and approving certain documents and authorizing certain other actions in connection with the issuance of the bonds. Drew. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there is a substitute proposed by the bond council if you would move to accept that. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the substitute? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> I think we actually can take that by uh, um, okay. motion because uh, it's a, it's just the motion. It's not a, just the motion. it's not the okay. main. All those in favor of taking up the substitute as presented, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is part three of the uh, modern litho, and this is authorizing the uh, bond documents. Is that it on that? That's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, moving on to 2012-6. Uh, uh, First reading, please. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, eliminating the property tax levied for the Fireman's Pension Fund, currently 0 .0961, approximately 17% of the city's total property tax, and authorizing in lieu thereof a Jefferson City Fire Department improvement sales tax at a rate of one-fourth of one percent, the collection and use thereof for improvement of the Jefferson City Fire Department and providing for the submission of this ordinance to the qualified voters of said city for their approval at the election to be held on August 7, 2012. Drew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the, as Phil said, the uh, fire department improvement plan. It has essentially two parts. The first is that it would roll back the uh, property tax uh, to zero so long as the sales tax portion is placed in effect. And uh, the property tax is a dedicated property tax specifically for the fireman's pension. Uh, in lieu of that, we would enact a sales tax of one quarter, uh, one fourth percent. And uh, this is very similar to what this the prior council saw come before it with the exception that the uh, tax would sunset in 15 years. Uh, the 15 years, uh, it, it has to be that off number to allow that in case in 15 years the voters don't reapprove the uh, pr the sales tax, this council would, uh, would probably absolutely need to uh, uh, bring the property tax back up to help pay for the pension. And there is no uh, items listed within the uh, ordinance that specify what the uh, tax would be spent on it. Uh, the statute says it has to be spent on fire department improvement. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Drew, I just asked Nathan a question, but I think maybe everyone ought to ought to hear this. The 15 year uh, plan that you're talking about. So in 15 years, if, if for whatever reason that tax would not be passed, how would how would the property tax go back up? Would it go back automatically, or is it just simply a reminder to the council that it would need to be changed? I don't believe that it could go back automatically okay. given the statutes as they are today. Right. And we can only do that once every other year. And so that would be the year in which the council would need to uh, uh, move to reinforce or bring the property tax back. Um, who's, the, I don't want to put you on the spot and I don't need the answer now, but who uh, here at City Hall, who's in charge of watching those things that, that come up? I know under past administration, uh, we had a half cent sales tax that didn't, we didn't lose, but I mean, you know, there was a deadline there that, that we uh, kind of missed. Who's the keeper of that? And if there's not one, that's fine. Mr. Uh, Administrator, maybe we can get one. I don't think that there's a person assigned to that. Uh, okay. And that's probably one of our great failings over time is assigning people to <laughs> watch this type of thing. Okay. I would say the city administrator is probably responsible for that. Okay. Uh, questions, Bob. <clears throat> uh, if someone failed to act or if the voters didn't approve a property tax, we have a legal obligation to fund the Fireman's Pension Fund, so it would just come out of general revenues. So That's correct. Federal law requires that we fund those pensions. So it's, it's not like it's not going to get funded. It's just a question of where it gets funded. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions on this side of the room for Drew? On this side of the room, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to 2012-7, uh, first reading, please. 
an ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, vacating Thanks, and scouts. discontinuing a sanitary sewer easement on JCMG site at 1241 West Stadium Boulevard. Mr. Schwartz, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have several in a row, so I'm going to come up here. Uh, this one uh, deals with the expansion that JCMG is uh, taking uh, underway right now. They, uh, their expansion required the sewer line to be relocated. They have done that. They provided a new easement for the new sewer line. Now they have asked us to uh, move forward with vacating the location of the old easement where the sewer line was. So that's what this bill does. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Roger? Okay, moving on to 2012-9. Uh, uh, Roger, didn't we, was that a suspension of the rules request? Or I'm on the wrong one. You're on the wrong one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These new guys, Roger, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming. <laughs> All right, first reading of 12-9. Uh, an ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a, a lease agreement with Leon and Teddy Hellebush for the purpose of farming city-owned property at Cortez and No More Victims Road. Roger. The uh, city owns nine acres of agricultural land next to the Algoa treatment facility on the east side of town. Uh, we have had this uh, leased for a period of time and the previous lease has expired and we have rebid this uh, for agricultural lease and the low or the best bid that we received was from Leon and Teddy Hellebush uh, for an amount of eighteen hundred and fifty four dollars a year which is a significant increase over what we've had in the past and this would allow it to also be extended for up to five years any questions Roger okay we'll have a first reading of 2012-10 an ordinance amending the code of the city of Jefferson, Missouri by clarifying transit system operations. Roger. Uh, we've got two minor changes to uh, the code here that we're recommending. Uh, the first one is to include college students as uh, a group that would also receive the same student discount that, that is available to other students. And the second one is to clarify the city bus service is only provided on uh, within the city limits. It was in the code, but it was listed in the paratransit section. So we wanted to pull it out of there and clarify that it's really for all uh, city buses. And we have a picture of our newest addition to our transit system up here. We've added bike racks to all of our uh, uh, buses that uh, drive the regular routes. And uh, so anyone that wants to uh, go to work in the morning take your bike and ride home or something of that nature you can use the city transit system to do that i'd be happy to answer any questions any questions or roger mr scribner roger are the uh, persons that are uh, transporting their bikes responsible for loading and unloading the bike themselves yes they are uh, but we will assist them if they need instructions on how to do it uh, it's really fairly easy. This is in the folded down position. If you see them driving, that, that rack folds up. You pull a handle and it folds down. You set the bike on and then there's a lever that comes up that secures the bike on, on the uh, rack. Any other questions or Roger? Mr. Henry. Roger, is there uh, any, actually any extra charge for, for bike riders for that? No, this is uh, something that other cities have provided, uh, and we're certainly hopeful this will help us to increase ridership on our transit system. All right, Roger, thank you for that presentation. Uh, moving on to 2012-11, uh, uh, we'll have first reading, please. An ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a development agreement with Mid-Missouri Investment Group, LLC. Roger. We have uh, three items on your agenda this evening that's related to the Cherry Creek redevelopment of that subdivision. Uh, and this first one uh, deals with a development agreement. Uh, the 
owner, Bill Ott, through Mid-Missouri Investment Group, is trying to secure a loan for uh, this property. And to do that, he has uh, found a couple of encumbrances on that property. And when they were looking at that, we also discovered that the blue line you see in the picture is where the storm sewer line is located. Um, that was put in but was not inspected by the uh, uh, city staff at the time. And we are, uh, when we did look at it, uh, we found that the uh, line, and I won't, I can't get it to advance. Uh, the line also has a lot of rock on the inside of it, so uh, that's what the inside of that pipe looks like. That's a 36-inch diameter pipe, and what this development agreement does is it requires that the developer get this cleaned out uh, so the city can inspect it and do whatever other repairs might be necessary to this pipe so that it can be accepted into the city system. And this is the next two bills are the ones that we're asking that the rules be suspended on so that we could move forward because the developer uh, needs to secure this loan and it's a HUD loan and it's got a, a tight timeline on it to be able to secure the loan. Mr. Mayor. Is there any objections to uh, having this uh, suspended and having third reading tonight from the council? Seeing none, we'll have third reading. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a development agreement with Mid-Missouri Investment Group, LLC. Okay, any changes in the last uh, few minutes? <laughs> any, qu any questions, Bob? Did you have a question I think you were going to ask to suspend? Okay, seeing none. Any uh, debate? Seeing none, roll call, please. Bray? Aye. Carol? Aye. Henry? Aye. Lubert? Aye. Mahalovich? Aye. Pope? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scribner? Aye. Weber? Aye. Motion passes. Now we'll have uh, first reading of 2012-12. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, accepting a sanitary sewer water easement in Cherry Creek, Section 1, and relinquishing portions of a sanitary stormwater easement located in Cherry Creek, Section 1. Roger. Within this same development, uh, this is the green line this time. Uh, we discovered that uh, some of the decks were built on the city sewer easement that runs on the back side of this property. Uh, to clear that easement, uh, the developer is proposing that the city vacate a six foot width to get all of the decks off of the sewer easement and they are providing us an additional six foot width on the opposite side uh, to replace that. It would not require the city to relocate the uh, sewer line and, and we feel that uh, we can certainly get to the sewer line to do whatever maintenance would be necessary. And we are asking that the rules be suspended on this one the same as the previous one. Okay, I see the uh, sponsor is uh, Councilman Scrivener. I move that we suspend the rules on 2012-12. Okay. Uh, any S objections from the council? Seeing none, it will be suspended. At <coughs> this point in time, we'll have third reading. An ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, accepting a sanitary sewer water easement in Cherry Creek, Section 1, and relinquishing portions of a sanitary stormwater easement located in Cherry Creek, Section 1. Roger. Any other questions? Any, the, any questions from the council? Roll call, please. Carol? Aye. Henry? Aye. Lubert? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Pope? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Weber? Aye. Bray? Aye. All right, moving on, we'll have a first reading of 2012 13. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Section 19401, Streets and Highways, Schedule J, Parking Prohibited, Subparagraph A of the Code of the City of Jefferson pertaining to a portion of Michigan Street. Roger. Um, we had a request on Michigan Street to uh, restrict the parking on one side. This went through our Traffic and Transportation Committee, and uh, we did have two of the property owners there came in, in, in support of this. Um, and we're 
recommending that the parking be removed along the east side of the street. That is actually the side of the street that has the most driveways and would have the least amount of parking impacted. I think it's about seven spots that would be removed. I know there was concern from the uh, owner of Michigan Place down there, and he has talked to uh, city staff and uh, the other property owners, and I, I think he's at least okay with this proposal at this point. Okay, any questions of Roger? Okay, moving on, we'll have a first reading of 2012-14. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Concrete Engineering, LLC, for the Dix Road at West Main Street Stormwater and the Autumn Lane Stormwater Project. Roger. The city took bids on our stormwater improvement projects that uh, we're moving forward with this year. Uh, one of those is on Autumn Lane and the other one is at the intersection of Dix Road and West Main. And uh, uh, the low bid that we received was from Concrete Engineering, and their bid is $167,723. Uh, we had 10 bidders on this project, which, which is absolutely great. But I wanted to show you a couple of pictures here because Dix Road and West Main is an extremely busy intersection in Jefferson City. and to replace the stormwater pipes under that intersection uh, is going to create some problems. So we put some pretty tight restrictions within this contract. The portion that you're seeing in yellow there, uh, the contractor will have to uh, dig that up and replace those lines under the street. There is uh, several utilities in their way and uh, the, we have re put restrictions on that they've only got four days to complete the work you're seeing in yellow, that includes removing the pipes, putting in the drop inlets, and replacing all of the pavement back in the street. If they don't make it in four days, we will assess damages of $1,000 a day to them. But if they make it a day early, they would receive an incentive of $1,000 a day. And then there's a uh, third phase of this where uh, we're doing the same thing again. We've given them three days to make the cut across West Main Street, and if they don't make it in three days on that one, uh, it would be $1,000 a day uh, assessment against them. But we offered $1,000 if they could get it done early as, a, as an incentive as well. Uh, we think that's a pretty tight restriction, but obviously it didn't scare the bidders away because we had 10 bidders on this project. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Roger? Dr. Pope. Dr. Pope. Roger, at our next meeting when we vote on this, would you also be able to, to uh, uh, preview for the community the detours that will be in place when this is done? I'd be happy to. Uh, the detours, uh, I'll, I'll bring them back and, and show you a map. Uh, but it's during this phase one when we'll have to have the most detours. If you look at this picture, the only one that's blocked will be uh, West Main going west. The other movements will be available, so the detour is not uh, as severe as the first one. But we're going to try to keep it as short as we can. We've already had conversations with the property owners immediately around that intersection, but as soon as we know when the contractor is going to do this work for sure, we'll communicate with them again. And it also requires that the work be done after school gets out. Any other questions or Roger? 